Hi, I'm Jackie from Moles for the Future Partnership. Our session is about peatland habitats and how important they are in our fight against climate change. We've made this video with the help of junior rangers from around the National Park and South Pennines and you'll notice from the video that the weather was really horrific so I want to say thanks to those junior rangers for being involved in such inhospitable conditions upon the moors. The video will have some stopping points where there's a summary and an activity for you to do so if you pause the video then you can take part in that activity and then progress on to the next part of the video. Like many habitats across the world, peatlands are performing a silent role in our fight against climate change. It's important that we protect these habitats and we learn about them so people understand how important they are. So it, it um, helps to eat the peat, which is extremely important for locking the carbon. Um, so uh, most of the peat is made up of uh, dead, uh, composed sphagnum moss. So, how do peatlands affect the climate? Well, it's all to do with the carbon cycle. So if you think about the carbon cycle and how vegetation, plants photosynthesize, taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, that's where the story starts here with this particular plant um, being crucial, which is the sphagnum moss that's under my hand here. Now I know you can't see, you can't feel it in the video, but it's incredibly soft and spongy and it absorbs lots of water. And this area under my feet is incredibly decomposition is slowed down so much that the rate of dying vegetation is actually higher than the rate of decomposition so what you end up with is peat which is partially decomposed organic matter such as this sphagnum here with very high amounts of carbon around 50% in some cases of pure carbon in the peat Okay Anna, so you're testing the peat depth here on Bar Brook on the Eastern Moors. Off yeah. you go. Uh, push this rod in and see how deep it goes and then we'll know how uh, deep the peat is here. So why does it matter? What's important about peat? Well peat stores a lot of carbon. It's really important in terms of climate change um, because it's stopping that carbon being released 
so there's a lot of sphagnum moss in this quadrat while Anna is pressing that peat rod into there. Anna, can you feel that? Have you reached the maximum? Yeah. You can see this beautiful, beautiful moss here is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is what makes up a large amount of the peat, partially decomposed because it's so boggy and wet here. Look at my shoes surrounded in water. It doesn't actually um, break down fully, so partially decomposed sphagnum makes up the peat, so it's very high carbon content. It forms about a millimetre a year. Let's see how uh, deep it is then, Anna. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Wow, I'm going to have to back up. <laughs> It's that deep. Is that 2.5 meters? And another half a meter. So that is approximately 2,500 years of carbon storage right under our feet. Yep. And that is where it wants to stay. 2,500 years, 2,500 millimetres and growing because all this sphagnum is helping to form more peat and fix more carbon into the ground. Thanks Anna. So why are some peatlands in the UK damaged and degraded to a point where they're releasing carbon? Well, in the National Park and South Pennine Moors, we're surrounded by major cities, which during the Industrial Revolution added to large volumes of air pollution, which actually contributed to stripping this important living bog layer of vegetation from some areas, and in some areas, leaving blankets of pure black peat with no vegetation. Healthy peatlands actually store carbon, locking it up in the ground beneath our feet. But degraded and damaged peatlands release carbon into the atmosphere, so actually becoming a carbon source. Our protection of peatlands is really important to remove that carbon source and turn it potentially into a carbon sink that's helping us in the fight against climate change. to keep the 
be wet because then it protects them so they don't release the carbon and it also helps the sphagnum moss and the grasses because they prefer to be wet and lock up a lot of water and also it doesn't, um, it doesn't let the carbon out. Um, so it lowers the risk of fires so because it's wet the fire can't catch it. Because it, it burns the peat and that uh, obviously lets off a lot of the carbon it's holding, which is obviously bad for the environment and climate So you need it to be wet to be able to plant the sphagnum in the correct conditions or so they won't survive and um, they also they can hold up to 20 times their own weight in water so they, they, you know, they obviously need a lot, lot of water and they don't mind water. The sphagnum moss uh, contains up to 20 times its weight in water and the peatlands they really like foggy and they really like being wet so this is what the peat says. Sphagnum moss it also has Okay, Scouts from Bradford South Scouts District, how many sphagnum plugs have you planted today? So you can volunteer or you can make sure you keep away from bare feet and don't sit off any fires or any fire hazards. They can stop having barbecues on a summer's day out on the moorlands and they could try to avoid walking on bare feet. Not cause fires and not damage it and snap on it too much because it will expose the pee and, and cause carbon dioxide but also causes climate change. When out in the countryside, keep to paths. Never light a fire or a barbecue and stay informed. Like follow Moors for the future partnership. Pete is often forgotten in the fight against climate change. Tell your friends about it. Tell your family about it. Tell your teachers about it. Tell your MP. Help us to preserve this valuable resource.